Right, today's pro bike comes from multiple Ironman champion, Laura Siddle. In fact, before she turned pro, she was full-time amateur world triathlon champion. Pretty impressive. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at her Sipo Viper R pro bike. Sipo is very much a triathlon focused brand. If you're coming from cycling, you may not have heard of Sipo before. And back in the day, they used to have some pretty wacky designs. And with that, they were more focused on triathlon and the geometries needed for triathlon. I would say this is a little more reserved compared to those previous models, but we've got some interesting colorways going on specific for Laura here, which are really quite vibrant and fun. She's riding in a size medium and the frame alone comes in at 1,250 grams. She's got some interesting modifications going on, particularly on the front end. So let's take a closer look. Right, so to optimize Laura's position, it looks like she's removed the standard stem and she's put in a 100 mil stem, but with quite a drop to basically lower the base bar and in turn lower her aero bars. So she's got the standard profile design area base bar, which comes with the bike, and she's got the profile design T4 aero bars coming off with a slight ski bend in. Um, she's got the Shimano Di2 shifters on both the end of the poles and the bull horns. But then we have this profile design bottle in the middle. And that's where things get quite interesting because we did feature this at the Challenge Championship race in Samarin. And we've got this really cool touch. It's the Yorkshire flag, basically a um, top cap cover. Uh, she's got that on there, I think for good luck, a little look, um, lucky charm. But actually in the aero bottle straw, she's got a pin. And I believe that is to stop the straw from folding over. So it's always ready for her to drink from. As with most aero bottles, we've got a little opening here so she can fill the bottle up on the go. And then built into the aero bottle as well, we've got this computer mount area here. So she's got her computer mount uh, attached to the end of it. Um, and just for added security, she's used a few cable ties to attach it. Can't go wrong with cable ties. In fact, talking cable ties, she's also attached her DI2 junction box just under the elbow pad here. Um, and then, just for a bit of motivation, she's also got a little message inside um, her aero bottle here. I assume this is where she stores her gels. But once those gels run out, it will tell her kits. Now I'm fortunate enough to bring Laura in to actually chat through some of the specifics now. So we've just left off on the handlebars. Moving down from that, we've got the uh, Shimano Dura Ace front brake and the rear brake is just hidden nicely under the bottom bracket here. Onto the wheels. So we've got parkour wheels. Talk me through them. Yeah, so new on board with this with parkour this year, so super happy with that. Um, I like supporting kind of the up and coming and they're British company, so that's great. Um, gone for a disc at the back and on the front is the Pasita, which is I think a 56 mil depth. Brilliant. Um, and then with Vredestein tubeless ready tyres. So yeah. Super. So the um, both both wheels are actually a 27 and a half mil width. And then to match that, you've got a 25 mil tire. Um, what tire pressure are you gonna run for race day? <laughs> so with the tubeless tires, you don't need to put in the huge amount of pressure. Um, I mean, particularly on this race course at, in Challenge Rort, it you know, the road surface is super great. So, but I'll probably do like 100, 105. So 100 on the front, 105 PSI at the back. All right, then moving on through the bike and onto the crank set, and you've got the Quark D4 power meter. Chain ring size, you've got 55, 42, pretty meaty. Yeah, yeah, we um, went up to 50. Oh, I think I've been riding a 55 for like the last couple of years. It just suits my cadence and my pedaling and that sort of thing, so yeah. Brilliant, and then a 165 crank length, and then on the end of those, Shimano Dura Ace pedals. Moving back from that, we've got front mech, rear mech, Shimano Dura Ace 9070 group set um, and the uh, cassette size. So you've got an 1127, um, but I understand you'll only use up to a 25 on that? Yeah, so it's 1128 at the back, but yeah, I'll only go up to the 25, which is what I train on anyway. So I'm used to that sort of as the, the larg largest cog. Okay, and then moving on to some of the finishing touches. Uh, let's take a look at your storage. So we've got a top tube bag here. That's for your gels? gels yep. How many gels will you take for a race like this, sort of long um, distance? So I use Shots Nutrition, which is an Australian company. I'll, I put the gels into like a flask and you can get four gels in one flask. So I have two flasks in there and then two flasks in my back pocket. I'm taking a gel every 20 minutes. Okay. 
we will take. All right, so, and yeah. then this little compartment here, what goes in here? Uh, I'll have some electrolyte tablets in there just to top up if I need on the day, depending on the weather conditions as it heats up on the bike course or not. Brill, and then you'll have, I think you said you'll leave this one free yes. in case you're grabbing. So I'll have uh, hydration in the front aero bottle and I'll, put, I'll start with one bottle on the frame, which will probably be a bit of a, a higher concentration of electrolytes, okay. um, which I then can add water to as I go through the aid stations. But I leave the second cage on just so I can grab water, um, particularly if it's going to be a really hot day. Um, I can always use that, you know, pour water over myself. Yeah. Brilliant. And then some of the final bits of storage. So we've got one here um, behind the seat tube and one behind the saddle. So what goes in these? <laughs> so for the race, I've got two pit stops and two CO2 canisters. So one in each of those really. Okay. Um, and that's for the tubeless. That's side. for the tubeless side of things, yeah. Great. And then finally the saddle. So this is the ISM Adamo saddle, uh, the attack. Um, is this something you've played around with? Because I know saddles are very specific to each person. No, to be honest, I've had this saddle, well, not specifically this one, but I've had the Adamo uh, attack for a long, a, a long number of years. Yeah. Um, I keep trying to change to their newer models. I just don't like them. Um, yeah. I buy, so I just buy that one every time and it suits me or that one. The, the one I had before that actually was probably like the prongs had like to totally moulded to me or <laughs> I'd moulded to them. But um, yeah, I just, I love it. It's comfortable for me. It works for me. And so that's what I go with. Brilliant. And I really like this little touch just to get your um, your bottle cage on there for the storage, just drilled through the back of the cell. So a nice little hack there. Really cool. Right, that's been absolutely awesome looking through your bike, Laura. Thanks so much for joining us Pleasure. today. Um, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. And if you want more to find out more facts from Challenge Rote, then click below. And if you'd like to see this bike again, it was featured in our championship video in Samarin on Cool Tech. Just click down here.